Hey guys, my name is Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail and this is our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? Thanks for popping in and seeing me. It's great to spend some time with you. So today I'm doing a redo of an old video that we did a live demonstration of back on Facebook when we were doing them there. Uh, so this weave is the Vipera Berris weave and we actually did this one on Facebook all the way back in 22nd April 2017. So although we were doing our best at the time, those videos are not good. So here is a new updated version that I hope you will find much more helpful. All right guys, let's get into it. Okay guys, so I've got some sample pieces made up here for you of the Vipera Berris weave. Um, so they will be coming up here on the side of the screen. They'll also be listed down in the description section that you find underneath this video. But just to run through them quickly with you. So these two here are actually 14 gauge AWG. So that's 1.6 millimeter diameter wire. Now this one over here is 5.25 millimeter ID and this one is 5 millimeter ID. Now personally I like the look of the 5 millimeter ID a lot better. It gives it uh, a little bit more definition to the weave. It's not as loose as this one. It is a it is a tight weave to weave, um, which is why I've put the 5.25 in to show you that that will also work. So you've got a small amount of play with this weave, a very small amount of play, not a, not a great deal. But um, personally, I like the five point, I like the five millimeter, but the five point two five is slightly easier to weave, and that is the one that I'll be working with today for you. But I just wanted to you to see the differences with those. The next one is the sixteen gauge version, so that's. 16 gauge AWG, 1.2 millimeter diameter wire, ring ID of 3.75, that gives a lovely nice dense weave. Next is our 18 gauge version, so that's 18 gauge AWG, 1 millimeter diameter wire, ring ID I chose here is 3.25 millimeters. And then finally our 20 gauge AWG, so 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. Ring ID on this one is 2.75 millimeters. Now you can also do a kinged version of Vipera Berris. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of it, but uh, I, know, I do know that a lot of people like it. I don't have a lot of experience with it, so I pretty much have just this one version here to show you. So this is 16 gauge AWG 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. It has a ring ID of a quarter of an inch or 6.35 millimeters. So if we compare that to our single ring 16 gauge version, you can see that the kinged version is quite a lot chunkier than our uh, single version. But you can definitely do a kinged version. As I said, that is the only size that um, I have really tested it in. It has these rings have an actual aspect ratio of about 5.5, so work with that with the other gauges if you're interested. Um, I also have a squared uh, wire version here. Um, this one is 14 gauge AWG, so 1.6 millimeter wire with a ring ID of a quarter of an inch. But that's just uh, to give you some ideas of what you can do to uh, whip up this weave. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this weave today in uh, 14 gauge AWG, 1.6 millimeter diameter wire with a ring ID of 7 30 seconds of an inch or 5.56 millimeters. Now this is not even close to being an ideal ring size for it. Uh, but it is the only colour that I've got that's close to the ring size and having a couple of colours will help you see the weave as it's, as it's being woven up. So it's going to be a lot looser than it should be but uh, just for demonstration purposes I will be using this ring size. Okay so to start with we just want to create a simple chain of one one one. I'm making it out of our bright aluminium rings. 
you want to do this for the length for twice the length that you want your um, final bracelet to be so um, it's also very easy to add or subtract from the length so if you don't get it exactly spot on it's not a big deal but aim for it to be about twice the length that, that you require it to be so you guys go ahead and weave up uh, your ch your chain your simple chain of one 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 of your bright aluminium rings or whatever it is you're using um, I'll meet you back here when you're done to show you what the next step is okay so I've whipped up my piece of starter chain I'm going to put a twist tie in one end to give it a, a give me something to hold on to now we're going to need to fold some of our center rings so that we've got an edge that almost looks like European 4-in-1. Okay, so to do that we've got ring 1 goes up, ring 2 goes down, ring 3 folds up, ring 4 goes down, ring 5 goes up, ring 6 goes down, etc, etc. Okay, that is the way we'll be folding it. So one goes down, just falls down naturally, the other one flips up. The next one falls down naturally, the next one flips up. But we don't need to do the whole weave, we don't need to hold on to all of that all the way down. We just need the first couple of rings folded into place. So we've got our two rings here and we're going to take up doesn't really matter whether it's what color it is but I'm just going to take up a color ring and I'm going to go into this ring here around what is commonly referred to as the eye so the eye is where two rings overlap okay so often you either go around an eye or you go through an eye like that this time we're going to go around the eye so we're going to go into this ring here and up through the back of sorry that was a bit close so we're going to go in through the front of this ring here and up through the back of this one here okay so taking our ring through the front of our second ring there and up through that ring there close it up and your work should look like this okay fold the next ring down Fold the next ring up. This time I'm going to take up a silver ring. I'm going to go through our new ring here, through our previous ring, and I'm also going to pick up that locking ring there. So we're going to go through our first ring, down through the front of our first ring, up through the back of our locking and our second ring okay just like that so I've picked up a total of three rings I've got my new loose ring my previous ring there on the side and the, the locking ring I've picked them all up and I'm going to close that up now it's up to you whether you work all the way down one side flip your work over and work on the other side or you can go and work on flip your work over and work on the other side it's totally up to you I prefer to run down one side and then down the other so that's the way I'm going to demonstrate it today all right so we let one ring go down we fold the next ring up we want to take a colored ring this time and this time I want to go through my first ring through my through my loose ring through the previous ring and I want to also pick up that locking ring okay and keeping in pattern you can see that this red locking ring is coming sort of from the bottom up here we want to do the same on the other side so we don't want to come down this locking ring from the top from here we want it to go through the back here okay so I'll show you what that looks like so we want to pick up our loose ring and we want to pick up our locking ring 
and you can see I'm mirroring the positioning of the previous coloured locking ring and they the previous side ring. Okay. And it looks like that. Now keep in mind these rings are not ideal. This is a little bit looser than it should be. But I'm just trying to show you with the different colours. Okay, so our next, next ring goes down. The following ring folds up. I'm going to take a silver ring this time. And I want it to mimic the position of this locking ring here. So two locking rings back. And it is going through the top of our red ring okay so we, when we put our next ring in place we want to make sure that it is feeding through the same position as that ring two rings back okay so you can see all my silver rings are going to be locking rings are going to be on the top edge of the weave and all my red rings are going to be um, on the inside of the edge there. So again, let one ring fall down, fold the next ring up. We're taking a colored ring this time. Okay, and we're going to go through our loose ring, through our previous side ring, and through our locking ring. Okay, making sure that we're coming up underneath so that it mimics the positioning of the previous red ring. Lock it into place. Let our next ring fall down. The one after that we fold up. We take a silver ring. We feed it through our new loose ring, through the previous side ring, and through the red ring, keeping the patterning in place with our previous silver ring. Okay, so you just do that down the edge of your bracelet until you've, or whatever it is that you're making, until you reach the end. And then you wanna flip it back so that the other edge is up top and we're going to start with a colored ring because our first ring over here is a colored ring and I'm just going to pick up those first two rings first one is easy don't have to worry about going through any additional side rings sorry about that okay our next ring is a silver ring Okay, if you're looking at this silver ring here, you can see that it goes through our next ring and then it's going up through our red ring. Okay, I'm just trying to mirror the positioning of this ring here on our other side. Okay, so you can see that our red rings are going to splay out our silver rings are going to come in together. Of course, when you turn over to the other side, it's going to be the opposite. But this side that we're working on, our next ring is red. We go to our next loose ring, we pick up it, we pick up the previous side ring as well as our locking ring because we're mimicking this one here it's coming down through the top of our silver ring so we want to do the same on this side so we're going to come down into there and pick that up okay silver ring is our next ring we pick up our loose ring and we pick up our locking ring, our previous locking ring and our previous side ring, making sure that we are mirroring the position of this ring down here. Okay, we want to come up through our red ring. Lock it in place. 
Okay, so our next ring is a red ring. So we're going to place that through our next loose ring. And then our red rings are sitting on top. So we're going to come down through the top of our previous locking ring, scooping up the side ring there as well. And closing that up. And you just continue doing that for the length of your bracelet or whatever it is that you're making. As I said, it's very easy if you get to the end of your rings and you find out that you don't have enough there. So let's extend this a little bit. So just open up that last ring and keep popping rings, a few more rings on to add to your length. And then you can go back here and you can fold up your next ring, whichever side you want to start on, it really doesn't matter. Um, our next ring in the sequence is our silver ring. So we're going to pick up our loose ring and our silver rings are coming up from underneath. So when I bring this ring around, I'm going to bring it up underneath our red ring through the previous side ring and close it up. Okay, fold down, fold up, next locking ring. And that's it guys, that's all there is to doing Vipera Veris Weave. Alright my lovelies, well that is it, that is the video tutorial for today. I hope the quality of this one is much more to your liking and that you found it useful. If you did find it useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, share the video if you like, leave comments or questions down below the video, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, if you're not a subscriber, it'd be awesome if you could do that for us. Um, check out some of the other content here we've got a few hundred videos for you to ruffle around in and see if there's something there that you might like and last but not least guys don't forget to give our shop link up here in the corner some love and affection that's where we sell the bits and bobs and watch my jigs you're going to need to whip up this weave and many others all right guys thanks once more for popping in and spending some time with me it's been awesome to be with you um, keep safe keep well and I will catch up with you again sometime in the very near future bye now Mwah.